Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Today, I'm going to be installing the Anytime Backup Camera to my Toyota Tacoma. This is a 2021, by the way. It's a kit that you can buy from Anytime Backup Camera, so check them out if you want to pick up the kit. I've got all the wiring and stuff laid out here on the table because you have to make some connections, and why not make them out here as opposed to trying to do everything inside the truck? And you can do that because everything just plugs into the back of the radio and the switch, which, by the way, is right here after you're all done. So we're going to jump right into it. Now, I suggest, and a lot of the other videos don't show this, but starting with the wire that's going to run through the firewall into the cab, go ahead and get that run first and then connect everything outside. Now, you can do that because the wiring is really long. I've already done it. What I've done is run it through the big giant grommet in here, and you can see it's the one right down there where the light is focused on with that blue wire. You see that blue wire going through? That's actually for something else. But I've run the wiring through that and then draped it around the truck. Now, in doing that, I've got the wire up here that is going to be inside the truck. What I'll do is continue to pull through the wiring here that is going to be outside of the truck. Just easier to work on it this way. Now, we're gonna start with the wiring that goes inside of the truck. Connected to it, you have a blue and a red wire, or a black and a red wire, I should say. The red wire, you can cap off, you're not gonna use it. Put some sort of an end on it, tape it up, or whatever. And then, of course, the black wire is going to be grounded inside the engine bay once we pull this wire all the rest of the way through. And then we have the end here that's going to connect up to the camera that will be in the grill area. So I'm going to go ahead and cap off the red wire here. And then I'm going to put some sort of a spade connector or something on the end of this so that I can ground it in the truck. I've got uh, my end on. Again, this is just for ground. I went ahead and tucked the red wire, which I did put some uh, shrink tubing over uh, and then shrunk it down against the black wire. Again, we're not using the red wire. It's merely a placeholder uh, for me at this point. So there's my ground. That will be ground once we pull all this through and then get the camera positioned. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into the wiring. Okay, we're going to start off with the long wire. This is the RCA jack with the red wire coming out of it. We're going to deal with this later. But we want to go ahead and grab the wiring harness, the relay, that has the two wires, black and green, and then the three RCAs. Now, you'll notice on the RCAs, one of your wires is going to have a black mark on it. You do not want to connect the camera wire to that jack. You want to pick one of the other ones. And there's only one other one that has the female in, so obviously that's the one. So we're going to go ahead, plug that in. Make sure you get that nice and secure. If you wanted to go a little overboard, you could put a little tape around that, but there really is no pressure on this ever, so it's not really necessary. Next up, you want to grab the other wiring harness. This is what is going to plug into the radio. Um, on the back of this, you'll find two RCA jacks amongst some other wiring. We're going to go ahead and plug those into the two remaining wires from the uh, relay that we just plugged into the camera. So there's no way you can mess this up. There's only a female and a male left. So you want to go ahead and plug one in again to the one with the black mark on it. Plug that in, and then you want to plug in the other uh, to the male end of the relay, like so. Next up, we're going to connect some red, or a red, and two green wires. Now, we have the red wire that's coming off of the RCA from the long camera jack, and then we have the relay green wire. It has green and black. We want the green. That's going to be connected to the red wire as well as the switch plug-in. This is going to what is what plugs into the back of your switch. It ha has a bunch of different wires on it. We're concerned with the green wire. This is the only instance where you're going to connect different colored wires. So we're going to connect the red wire from the RCA to the green wire from the relay and the green wire from the switch plug-in. Okay, I've got the connection made here. 
uh, came out pretty well. I recommend soldering this, by the way. Don't use butt connectors, and uh, this is the best way to do it, I think. But next up, we need to tackle these two ground wires, uh, the black wire from the relay and the black wire from the switch plug-in. You may also want to add a third wire on there so that you can ground it. This does need to be grounded somewhere inside the cab by the radio, anything that you can ground it to. So I'm going to add an extension, if you will, a third wire off of this so that I can ground it somewhere inside the truck. I've got the ground wire off of the switch plug connected to the ground wire off of the relay. And then I did put uh, in the mix a longer wire so that I could ground it in the cab. I'll put an end on that when I see how much room or where I'm going to ground it to. So that leaves us with a few wires, color matching, which makes it very simple to go ahead and connect up to the switch plug. On this side, and these are both the loomed wires, you have a blue and a gray. Over here you have a red and an orange. And if you notice, on the plug wire, the switch plug wire, you have a blue, gray, orange, and red. So you just want to cut, connect up the color matching wires. Real quick, before we step inside, here are the connections. The blue, gray, orange, and red. Everything is now ready out here to step inside the truck. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of the wiring out put the wiring back in the truck that I have running over there because all of this is going to go inside the truck. And then the camera wire here can be pulled to the front and we'll get on with the rest of the install. We've got all the wiring and stuff laying in here in the seat. One challenge uh, I just noticed, since I have everything all connected here, uh, we have to get it from down here in the footwell up behind the radio. So. That's going to be interesting to see. We'll see how uh, complicated that's going to be. Would have been much easier if I just had a single wire, but it's all wired to everything now, so we'll get to that. Next up, we need to remove the radio, or at least pull it out so we can get to the back of it, of course. That means removing this trim piece. It's pretty easy. You just kind of grab the edge and pull gently, and this whole piece is going to come off, including my phone holders, which are attached to it. And then we'll have access to the four screws behind the radio so we can pull it forward a little bit. And there, it just pulls off. There's just a bunch of clips around the back. It's pretty simple. Okay, time to remove the radio. I did put a towel down there over the shift knob because the face of the radio is going to be sitting on the knob. And you don't want to do this whole mod, turn your camera on, and have a bunch of scratches across your, your display. So it's 10 millimeter as far as the bolts go. And we just want to kind of gently pull the radio out. Don't go crazy. There is a lot of wiring back there. Hopefully, yeah, we can get it out here far enough to expose all of the jacks and things that we need. And we're going to be removing the gray one here and I believe the white one here. And then we're going to be plugging in our ends down there. But before I do that, I did go ahead and pull the wire back through because I just didn't want to mess with trying to get all of that spaghetti thing of wire up behind the dash. So I'm going to run the wire down and then back out of the front. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll pick up with uh, connecting it up. Okay, got all the wiring run. It's all back into the cab, all that good stuff or the the hood or under the hood. So now we need to disconnect this gray plug and this white plug. The gray plug is going to plug into the harness that you can see some red wiring on just for identification purposes. The other one, the white one, is going to plug into the harness that has the RCAs on it. You can see here. Also, it has a white wire right here at the edge. It's how I'm identifying them. Now, you can't plug them into the wrong ones, they won't fit. But just an easy, quick way to identify them before you actually plug them in. So I'm going to pull them out, plug them in, and then we'll have the connections made. Except for the ground, uh, which I still have to do yet. And I'm going to ground it probably just to one of these screws over here on the side of the radio. All right, we've got them plugged in up here. Again, you can only plug them in one way, so it's not too difficult. Now, a couple little tips while you're doing this. Don't forget your ground wire. You've got to ground this somewhere. 
and the switch wire uh, for your switch. I reached around through there down to the bottom and then just squeezed the two little holders that hold these blank plates in and pushed it out through the front. And then I ran the wire through so that when it comes time to hook in my new switch, my front and back camera switch, I have the wire right here. Don't forget to do that. All right, got the radio back in there. I did zip tie the wires down a little bit. Now, remember, we wanted to leave our switch wire hanging out of the hole uh, so that we could go ahead and mount our switch. So I'm going to plug that in and then stick it in the hole. And then all we have to do is go under the hood, place the camera, uh, tuck the wiring under, and we'll be done. Got the wire run, and I ran it underneath this uh, plate on the side, this cover. So it comes out down there and then runs up right through this cover and then down into the engine bay and then, of course, behind the grill. Now, I do have the camera mounted. I did run into a little bit of a problem. The bracket that I had is actually for the OEM version. Uh, since this is not an OEM camera, nor do I even know how you get an OEM camera, um, it didn't work. So I could not mount the camera up here. Kind of a drag. I don't know if anybody, you know, if that bothers anybody. It doesn't really bother me too much. I'll probably put some kind of a cover or something in there just to make it solid. Eh, it doesn't really make any difference. But as you can see, obviously, I mounted the camera down here. What I did is I took off the grill. Of course, you have to do that anyway. And then I took out the garnish cover and then I took the sensor off the back. Pretty simple. And then I just drilled a hole up through. It's hidden. It's inside. You can't see it and uh, bolted it on just like that. So it's a little bit lower, obviously, than the uh, OEM version would be, but it doesn't have as severe of an angle either. So I'm hoping I get good view out of it. So now, before I put all the wiring away, we've got to get inside and test it, see if it actually works. There is one more step, so make sure you stay tuned for that. It's pretty important. Okay, we're inside the truck, full disclosure, about had a mini uh, anger attack, maybe it's a heart attack, uh, because I turned the truck to accessory and I got a TSS sensor malfunction, because of course I forgot to plug it in. It's plugged in now, everything is plugged in. So let's hit the key, see if it works. First thing you're gonna notice is it lights up. I noticed that before, that's a good thing. So let's turn the truck on. Everything is good. We have to let the screen do its thing, I guess. You know, safety first. Let's hit the camera, see what happens. First, we're gonna go just normal reverse. There's normal reverse. The camera is working. That's a good thing. And there is the rear view. How awesome is that? Let's hit front. Check that out. Now, you may notice uh, we have grid lines and we have uh, a uh, reversed look. My workbench and stuff that you see there is not on the right. Uh, it's actually on the left. So the camera is a bit reversed. We're going to take care of that next, and this is uh, important unless you want to look at that all the time. Oh, by the way, no uh, errors on the gauge cluster. Back out here at the front of the truck, you may have noticed these three little looped wires. These control what you see in the camera. We have purple, green, and white. If you don't want it to uh, mirror uh, like it did, in other words, if you don't want things to be reversed, you need to snip the white wire. Next up is green. Green controls the grid lines. So if you don't want to see those grid lines, you want to snip the green. Now, purple is if you had mounted the camera upside down. In other words, instead of it facing like that, it was flipped the other way. You would cut that purple wire to reorient it the right way. So I'm going to snip the white, I'm going to snip the green, and then we'll take another look at it and see what it looks like now. Let's take a look. First, we're going to go rear again, just for kicks. There's the rear camera. Now we're going to go forward, and you notice we have no grid lines, and everything is how it's supposed to be. You can read the major look sign. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, you can read the sign and everything is oriented how it's supposed to be oriented. In other words, the workbench is on the left and it's on the left in the picture. Anyway, that is uh, what it looks like now. All right, that is it. I am done, except for having to button up some wiring. I'll have to tuck that stuff back. You guys probably don't want to watch me do that. But anyway, that is the Toyota Tacoma 
front any time camera or any time reverse camera. It's an any time camera either way. Love this mod. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, a little disappointed I couldn't put the camera where I wanted, but I still got it in such a way that I can see what I want to see. And that's the idea. Now, if you're wondering what this is for, there are multiple applications. Obviously, if you're pulling into a parking lot, you're pulling up to somebody, you can flip that sucker on, see what's in front of you because you can't see what's in front of the Tacoma. Obstacles, kids, dogs, pets, bikes, you name it. If you're a big time off-roader, obviously you can flip that on and see what's in front of you or what's behind you, depending on what you're doing. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Particularly if you've done this before, I'd be curious to know what you think and do you actually use it? And what do you use it for? Leave a comment. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels. Mod Driven, all about the Honda Civic, six-speed manual coupe, love that car, and Rob Motive JT, all about the Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, why not subscribe? And while you're at it, smash the subscribe button here too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.